I'm Rick Falkving. I'm most known for founding the world's first Pirate Party, which has now spread to 70 countries. We have representation in the European Parliament and in Parliament on pretty much every level across Europe. Not everywhere, but on every level. And uh, for that effort, I've been named a top 100 global thinker. Time Magazine nominated me as one of the world's 100 most influential people and a number of other awards and uh, prestigious recognition for which I'm very humble, but it's still where I come from. So I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I've been, uh, I found my first company at age 16 and that's pretty much de defines who I am uh, and what I do. Excellent. In your opinion, what's wrong with the internet today? Wow. That's a big question, isn't it? What's wrong with the internet? Well, the internet is just technology, you know? The, uh, the internet as a technology amplifies every aspect of human nature. And so I think the problem isn't necessarily that the amplification is such. I think the problem lies more with the regulators, specifically regulators and legislators who think they understand the internet, but in reality they don't. And I'm not joking when I say that there are lots of legislators and executives who get their emails printed for them by their secretaries and think that makes them understand the nature of the internet. And I would argue that that would be the real danger of the internet today. People trying to regulate it who don't understand it. And there's no shortage of those. In your opinion, can we judge early technology by its early adopters? Can we judge technology by its adopters? That's an interesting question. I actually never got that before. I think early, spontaneously, I think early adopters tend to be fairly similar. If you have early adopters of a technology, you can usually find the kind, same kind of sentiment in each early adopter community. What's much, much more interesting though is where, whether these communities are working to grow mainstream, like Bitcoin is, like the internet was, like some other communities are not because they're not even aware that going mainstream by definition requires abolishing a lot of the early adopter culture. And that's a very, very hard step to take. In marketing it's called crossing the chasm and it's called a chasm for good reason. It, it requires pretty much reversal of a lot of the early values. So. Can we observe something from early internet adopters versus Bitcoin, early Bitcoin adopters? Yes, we can. We can observe that two years ago, the Bitcoin conferences had much more of a hackerspace feeling to them. Today we're at Bitcoin 2014 and this feels like a professional conference. So even though Bitcoin has arguably not gone mainstream yet, the community is making an active effort to grow out of its initial comfort zone, just like the initial people building the internet were. And so I predict that the, the Bitcoin growth curve has a potential to pretty much mimic the early growth curve of the internet. And we might be at the equivalent of 1993-ish, 1994-ish, on the verge of a mainstream awareness breakthrough at least. How does network Computing, really, that, that's a very interesting question. I'd try, I'd try to look at some of the Bitcoin 2.0 projects that take blockchain technology and build on it. If you take, take Ethereum, for instance, that adds, or as you say, re-adds scripting to the Bitcoin concept, which was originally in the Bitcoin concept, but which was, which was dropped because Bitcoin was revolutionary enough as it was. What you can observe is that you've kind of had a series of abstractions to computing. It used to be that you needed a server, a physical box of metal to run a process. Then virtualization hit about a decade ago and you could buy, you could all of a sudden run some 50 servers, pretend servers, on one hunk of metal. And they all thought they were full servers but they were just sandbox environments in this, in this box. Then elastic virtualization appeared and you, can, you could just rent one of these servers somewhere and you didn't really need to care where, but you still needed the execution environment which pretended to be a real server. What Ethereum and similar 
and similar technologies do, is to abstract this one layer further. It does away with the entire operating environment, and you're just running code in the network. And that is a huge level of abstraction that does away, that finally does away with the server idea. As long as the code pays for its own execution, it'll keep running in the network. And I think that opens up far more possibilities than we've considered today. Well, first of all, I think there is a uh, rather large symbiosis between the hacker community and the WikiLeaks community. The uh, hacker community tends to regard truth and transparency as sacred values. So it's kind of a net generation values thing. I don't think they're two separate communities. However, you could also easily observe that this woke a lot of the, the WikiLeaks financial blockade woke a lot of people up to how unhealthy it is that the United States-based financial system essentially has a finger of death that they can point at any organization worldwide. And that is a serious vulnerability. That is an unacceptable single point of failure. That essentially means that the US government holds a kill switch for everybody's organization. Let that sink in for a minute. And that in turn means that at least I, when I'm building my next business, I will not accept anybody else, in particular not on a, for a foreign power, to hold a kill switch to my organization. So I think that blockade of WikiLeaks will have much, much for more far-reaching implications for the price of Bitcoin and for the adoption of Bitcoin than what we've seen in these years because it planted an idea that I don't like the concept of a kill switch to my organization and people will start rebuilding that and it'll take years before we see the full impact. So I think there's an inertia to these kinds of events that isn't readily seen in the day-to-day -day swings.